a lot of people kept saying, uh, oh, 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 twist your hair, twist your hair, this and that. So, I twisted my hair. Kill it, crew! Yes, sir, yes, sir, we are back with another video. Yeah, we are back. I'm actually gonna get my hair twisted eventually. Probably, like, tomorrow. Guys, if you're wondering who did my hair, I did it myself. Like, I've been doing this for years now, so ever since I was growing my hair back in 20. 19, I was 19, right? I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, actually. yeah, 2019. But yeah, we're gonna be reacting to the game theorist, the FNAF, the clue that almost solves everything. But before then, be sure to leave a like to our channel and subscribe because we're coming out with a straight bang. Because we are close to 500 subscribers, bro. We are like bro. this close to 500 guys, subscribers. Dude, you guys are insane. Thanks so much for subscribing, tuning in to our channels, and liking. Bro, you guys are insane. Like, seriously. You guys are insane. I like to be honest, me and him wasn't expecting this too. Ever yeah, since no. we created this channel, we was like, eh, I don't know. We, like, we had our doubts. We're like, eh, this channel might fall off, like usual. Literally, like usual, but mm -hmm. it didn't. And here we are today posting videos for you guys. So, yeah, like so. I said, if you guys want to see more parts of this type of content, leave a like, comment what you want to see next. Mm -hmm. and, and then, guys, um, once we hit that 500 subscribers, uh, we're going to have the community so you can start, you know. Yeah, you can talk to us. I mean, talk to us, better yeah. than, you know, the comment section. So, mm -hmm. subscribe to the channel. I mean, what yes. else to say? But without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's go. <clears throat> The end the horror. Today, we solve FNAF. Wait, did we say this exact same thing seven years ago? Yes. Internet, welcome to Game oh, Theory, the show that reminds you that if you click the don't, like button hard the enough, it'll summon DJ Music Man to your neighborhood for a block party. Go Ooh. ahead, try it. Hit that like button. Didn't work? Have you have you tried clicking subscribe? I hear that sometimes works too. Yeah, I guess yeah, you must exactly. Not be clicking hard enough. <laughs> subscribe. So I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of not working hard Plus. enough, aren't you tired of just plain boring merch? The kind that you buy and sure it looks cool, but it just sits well, there on your body, board. not doing anything interesting. Right. Well, what if you your go. merch was actually a puzzle? Introducing yep. the world's first quest jacket. I know what you're thinking. A denim jacket isn't anything revolutionary, and you'd largely be right, except you'd also be missing one of the most crucial details. Those patches, they're not just any old D&D style patches. They're clues to help you solve a much bigger puzzle that exists inside of this thing. It's not just a jacket. It's the world's first ARG jacket. You heard that right. A world first. It's not every day that you create, like, the first of something, but to all my research, I don't think a product like this is ever existed. We've actually been working for the past two years to make something like this happen. Working with garment manufacturers to sew secrets into places that they've never even thought about before. Obviously, I don't want to give too much away because part of the fun is letting you guys solve this for yourself, but we pulled out all the stops to give wow. you a piece of clothing that you can actually experience. This thing is premium to the max, and if you manage to solve it, you get a special final patch to show that you are truly the puzzle master. So go ahead, head on down to the, the description and be a part master. of history. Grab yourself the first ever piece of air clothing and what will be the first in our series of quest jackets roll an investigation check to see if you've got what it takes today I we did. finish milking <laughs> i mean covering the major mysteries of security breach and you know what i think i solved it or at least i think i've solved most of it seven years ago i made this video the clue that solves five nights at freddy's where we put together all the pieces to support dream theory the concept that the first four games of the series were all a collection of nightmares happening inside the mind of a child in that episode there were a lot of points of evidence, but ultimately the conclusion hinged on one key design detail, the alarm that brought each night to a close at 6 o'clock a.m., uh, a grandfather clock for three days. games, and a digital clock for number four. Oh, three six, games in the crying two, child's house three. where we see a grandfather clock, the fourth oh, the in a days, hospital yeah. right yeah, one, before two, he dies, four. which, ironically oh, enough, is days. the one whose gameplay is happening in a recreation of the house. Ooh, there's a reason this series is so difficult to talk about. Anyway, the it reason is. I bring that video up is because 
because today's theory works largely sense. in the same way. Over the past few FNAF episodes, I've been trying to make heads or tails of security breach, pulling at what, to me, felt like the strongest thread. Gregory as the crying child, reborn mm -hmm. in a robot body. Him reuniting with his brother Michael in the form of Glamrock Freddy, and his sister Elizabeth <coughs> in the form of Vanessa. And we've covered a lot of evidence trying to support that claim. The character's design, colors, the ice cream, the voice lines, robotic eyes, the satisfying narrative arc that it provides the game's three-star ending. I mean, it's a lot. There are two episodes that are jam-packed full of discussion around exactly mm, this. But today, I finally funny. have my smoking gun. The clue that takes it from just a controversial theory to, at least in my mind, largely proven fact. Just like with the clocks and the dream theory, it's the one clue that is so specific, so intentional that it confirms that this was the main intent of the game. Until, of course, they decide to retcon it all due to bad audience feedback to keep the franchise going for another seven years. Sorry, guys, I hate to say it, but I think I'm unfortunately right this time. Gregory is a robot, and he's the crying child reborn. And by the end of today, I think you're gonna be convinced. And then from there, we're gonna talk about how all of that factors into the game's narrative and its final mystery, Patient 46. It all begins here, the post-it room. Ha! Huh. What? This is unexpected. After exploring the sewers to decommission Chica, Gregory winds up here. A room full of glowing staff bot heads and lots of post-it reminders on literally every surface. I mean, this thing is a flashing neon sign that says, IMPORTANT LORE HERE! And yet, in online discussions, it's been largely overlooked because it's kinda sandwiched in the middle of the game, overshadowed by the animatronic spaghetti monster ending. And even though I knew that something had to be hidden in here, trying to figure it out was like finding a needle in a haystack. So what is this? What are we looking at here? I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah? Is it obvious, Matt? What, what is it? You get to a certain age. Uh-huh. And you just, you gotta start taking notes. Uh, Post-it notes? Yeah, you just leave them around. Okay. <laughs> but also there's, um, robot heads. So with that incredible insight, I spent literal hours off camera trying to look at every single post-it note to make sure that I had the full picture. And the answer I got was, don't. Do not do that. Learn from my mistakes. It took me so long, so long, only to discover that the game files had been dug up and the post-it textures were just there in three simple images. Thanks to well, Just X Fot nice. for uploading these to GitHub. Flush those hours of my life down the toilet. When you study these post-it textures, you actually realize that there are three phases to the post-it notes. One that's barely legible, another I mean, where the really spelling and drawing improve slightly, and the final so where they I become nearly perfect. It <laughs> looks like someone is trying mm -hmm. to learn how to write and draw, slowly getting better over time. Yeah, it and it all like begins here with a note written in binary. When you first enter the room, there's a cardboard box in the middle, which, if I were to guess, is steel wool trying to draw our attention to the most important post-it clues in what otherwise is a very crowded and busy looking room. On it, we get this binary string, which translates to why is I? That's it. The grammar, I think, is intentionally bad because this is a computer coming into consciousness, asking the question, why am I alive? And doing it written in binary, the language of machines, computers, robots. Elsewhere in the room is more binary that translates to hide. Whatever this thing is, it's scared and it's confused. It hides until it can better understand what or who it's meant to be. The other illegible phase one notes here are random flashing thoughts. The sky, kids, love, random glimpses of memories coming into focus. The phrase, I can feel it, is this creature coming into consciousness. And this right here, you are something family, which looks like Afton family, but it's pretty unclear. In short, it appears to be a machine that started speaking in binary, but as more and more memories start to take hold, it begins to write in normal alphabetic characters. When you dive into the notes from phases two and three, though, things start to get much clearer. It's mainly images and text revolving around birthday parties. Happy place, birthday time, family, a pile of presents, some cake, let's get snack, fun, 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 friends forever, pizza time. Nothing particularly earth shattering for a series about pizza restaurants. But then there's one post-it in the phase three notes that really stands out. The one clue that truly brings together the last two months of research. This thing is the linchpin. It's our smoking gun, my friends. And it all boils down to a present alongside three simple words, all for me. The party was all for me. Does that mean anything mm. to you? Because it certainly does because for me. Was... You see, in the FNAF yep. survival logbook, a seemingly innocuous workbook full of pizzeria-themed activities, you have three voices speaking through the pages. Michael Afton, writing his answers in red pen, the vengeful spirit Cassidy, using lightly faded text, and the crying child, altering the physical text of the book. One conversation that happens between Cassidy and the crying child plays out like this. Cassidy says, the party was for you, and the crying child responds, it was for me, all for me. Wow. Suddenly all the
the party imagery makes sense. The balloons, the crazy. cake, the kids. This is the bite victim, the crying child, coming into consciousness and remembering the birthday party that took his life. And using this context, suddenly everything in these notes takes on a whole new meaning. In the first phase of notes, we see a crudely drawn house with a set of arrows pointing towards what looks to be a strange set of doors. Maybe another building? Which admittedly doesn't make much sense unless this is the crying child, who, in FNAF 4, would walk down and to the right and then back up to go to Freddy's with his brother every single day. In the phase 3 notes, we see this close-up of a bear, which would have been the last thing that the crying child saw before his head my got chopped. God. Blue, Yo, yellow, green, man. and red? Those Dang. are the flashing lights above the Fredbear stage as he gets bit. Like, or, you know, oh, maybe it's the balloons crap. on the nearby table for someone who can't tell the difference between blue and purple. Even things like hide and no hide relate to the crying child's behavior throughout FNAF 4. Mm -hmm. He hides under tables, and he is constantly made fun of for it throughout the game. We also see a lot of dialogue about running away, yeah, just like on the post-its. Digging deeper, we also start to see other patterns emerging. The number 7 shows up repeatedly as both a set of tally marks as well as a set of 6 faces with a smaller 7th one off to the side. This ties us directly back to FNAF VR, where we had a glitching purple gravestone for Afton in the middle of 7 normal gravestones. 5 missing children, Charlie the puppet, and the smaller face watching on, the crying child. As he says in other notes, all my friends. There's also repeated use of the number 3. 3 faces, 3 kids, words repeated 3 times like home 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 and fun fun fun, 3 slices of pizza, 3 presents, even just counting to the number 3. So what would that mean? Well think about it, we've seen a lot of references to a house and family throughout these post-its. Seems to me like it's a reference to the 3 Afton kids, Michael, Elizabeth, and the crying child himself. And the thing that brings all of it together isn't a post-it note, but instead the table higher up in the room where we see the staff bots arranged yep. like a family at dinner. A mother and a father alongside their 3 kids. One red-headed pigtailed girl, one boy, and a kid with his head bit off. And just to hammer it all home, in the middle of the table, the collectible is a poster for Fredbear's oh, yeah, okay. Family Diner. The place of the bite. The yep. place where all of this began. It looks like the robot finally figured out who he was, and he started to recreate his family. The robot is the <laughs> crying child, which by proxy then has to be Gregory. And if you need further proof of humanoid robots in the game, Illy Becky on Reddit caught this detail from Sister Location. Humanoid heads, ones that look very similar to Gregory's face. Oh, and a last thing, much to everyone's excitement, there's actually a new book series coming out later this year. A new season of Fazbear Frights called Tales from the Pizzaplex, obviously referencing the location and security breach. The cover of the first book in the new series? Robot Kid. There it is. Uh, Which leads us then to the last puzzle of security breach, the retro CDs. For those of you who don't know, there are 16 CDs around the map that you can only find once you've upgraded Freddy's eyes. From there, you take the CDs to a hidden room designed to look exactly like Mike's room from Sister Location. These CDs seem to be recordings of the therapy sessions for two patients. Patient 71, who we mentioned last time is clearly Vanessa, and Patient 46, who we never get to hear speak. And over the course of the various sessions, 46 and 71 are set up to be direct opposites of each other. Vanessa likes flowers, Patient 46 does not. Oh, you like those? The janitor on this floor has a garden and has been putting bouquets in the offices here for years. What's the problem? Oh, the flowers? I'll move them. Vanessa likes blue skies and doesn't like dark basements. 46 prefers it dark. I like the blue sky. I don't like dark basements. Oh, right. Too bright. When the shade's pulled, it feels like we're in a cubbyhole or a cave. Yeah? Vanessa doesn't like candy. 46 does. Would you like a candy? No, thank you. Those have 35 calories a piece. Sure, you can have a candy. <laughs> Clearly, we're meant to see these characters as opposites, which is why so many people online consider that patient 46 might actually be Vanny, Vanessa's alter ego possessed by Glitch Trap, or even more extreme, Vanessa's evil twin sister, considering the fire ending shows us a dead Vanny on the ground and Vanessa looking down from the burning building's roof. But let's quickly talk about those two interpretations. First of all, Vanessa and Vanny are the same person. They have to be. All the evidence leading up to this game in places like FNAF Special Delivery have pointed to a woman named Vanessa A getting mind hacked by Afton and reluctantly following his orders. And in this game, we still have pieces of evidence. For instance, in the CDs, we learn that Vanessa is buying fake fur to make the Vanny costume. On your breaks, it looks like you were shopping for a costume. You purchased some fake fur material. What are you gonna make? If she's not the one wearing it, 
why would she be making it? To me, the fire ending here is meant to be symbolic. We haven't beaten Princess Quest yet, so Vanessa's spirit is still trapped inside that burning building. Oh, but her yeah. body has died. She is one person. But that could the persona sense. of Vanny actually be Patient 46? Again, the evidence just doesn't seem to add up to that. Throughout their sessions, we get multiple indications that the therapist is speaking to a child. The way they speak to Patient 46 here... You don't want me to get in trouble, do you? I could be put in the corner for a time out. Yeah, mm. you think that's funny, huh? And again here... Tragedy always leads to a feeling of loss. It's a hole that feels funny, right? The way they explain simple mm. words... And I'm surprised by your knowledge of computers. You're something of a phenom. Do you know what that word means? It means you have unusual skill, like a hacker. The way they point out that 46 doesn't fit into the chair. That chair doesn't really fit you, does it? They even mention the fact that they specifically work with children. You know, I work with people of all ages, from little kids to the very elderly. I understand that therapists would want to treat alters as they see themselves, but this just doesn't seem to fit. At no point do we get an indication that Vanny sees herself as a child. But now let's go back to what we assume we know about 46. They're a kid, they like the dark, they like candy, they're really good with computers, Computers. In fact, they're a bit robotic themselves, answering questions in cold, detached ways. When I read your account of what happened, it came across as, well, more of an objective rather than a subjective narrative. Oh, sorry. You don't know what that means, do you? Here again, we get another example of the therapist having to explain a relatively simple word. Now, look at our post-it room. It's a dark cave underground, outright labeled as this is my home. On the central cardboard box is a drawing of candy. And a robot would be emotionally detached and would also be great at hacking. Heck, the therapist does tell patient 46 to write down their feelings. I suggested you write down exactly what made you so sad and scared. And if this room isn't an example of that, I don't know what is. Taking it one step further, if I'm right in saying that Gregory is indeed the robot that came into consciousness here, that's why he doesn't fit into the chair. He's a kid. That's also the reason Steel Wool couldn't let us hear 46's voice throughout these therapist tapes. It would give away the game. It would immediately take away the mystery of who 46 is since we hear Gregory talk so much. But why would Gregory, a robot kid hiding out in the pizza plex, actively be seeking out therapy? He's not in a school of any kind and he's not employed, so it wouldn't be mandated. What is going on here? Well, over the course of the 16 CDs, we listen as both patient 46 and Vanessa visit a total of five therapists, all of whom are implied to have been mangled to death by machinery. But the deaths here aren't arbitrary. If you track the tapes, each therapist ends up getting killed off immediately after they start asking Vanessa about encrypted messages that she's been receiving from a mysterious figure. Your performance reviews are good. But a routine check of your online history has revealed that you spent quite a bit of time with someone in an encrypted conversation. We have transcripts, and I've read them. Dead the next session. The messages you're getting seem very manipulative in nature. You know who I'm talking about. Why won't you open up about it? These files are full of details about your life. Again, dead the next session. When the encrypted messages get brought up to 46, same thing. When I saw some of your recent encrypted conversation logs, at first, I thought I was looking at more examples of you just talking with yourself. Then I realized it was different. When I study this, it sounds like there is someone else responding to you. A third therapist bites the dust. The therapists cover all sorts of topics. Bad childhoods, work history. One therapist even confronts patient 46 with all the other dead therapists. Nothing. No response. It's only once the encrypted messages come up that they're suddenly marked for death. We also know that it's 46 doing the killing here. The dead therapists are a complete surprise to Vanessa. Hi. Go ahead. Sit down. I don't know you. What happened to... Oh, we'll get to know each other in no time. But to 46, it's just business as usual. Why did you lie? Why don't we come back to this another day? You're shaking your head as though that's not going to happen. He's shaking his head because he knows that now she is also marked for death. To me, all of this screams of 46 keeping tabs on Vanessa. He's going to therapy not for himself, but rather to follow her actions, making sure that she's not saying anything that she shouldn't about these encrypted messages. And when the therapists do get too close to the truth, they're bumped off. We learn in one of the last CDs that patient 46 isn't being manipulated, but is instead the one doing the manipulation. I don't think you're being manipulated here. I think you're the one doing the manipulating. No comment? Huh? 
Putting two and two together would tell us that patient 46 is the one communicating with Vanessa. He's controlling her life for some reason. In fact, 46 appears to be the reason Vanessa is working at the pizza plex in the first place. One odd detail of the in-game messages is that Vanessa was not supposed to get the security job. In the message marked for deletion, we see that Vanessa's lack of security experience gets the interviewer to not recommend her for the job, and yet she's hired anyway, despite, as it says in another message, no prior qualifications. In both messages, we're told that it's an internal reference coming from the top that got her the job. Someone has brought Vanessa here for a specific purpose. And who better than a hacker that's clearly established to be in the Pizza Plex's emails? Patient 46, Gregory. In short, it looks like Gregory is manipulating the situation. Determined to get Vanessa to work at the Pizza Plex, following her to all her mandated therapy sessions, and ultimately killing off anyone that gets too close to the truth. I mean, after all, Gregory is not opposed to using a bit of violence to get what he wants. We have to get these! We could upgrade you! Oh, that's true. He's also not opposed to lying about it. This upgrade. Yep. It was Chica's. Please be honest. How did you get it? When I was in the kitchen earlier, she fell into some sort of garbage smasher. Is she okay? Well. She's still functional. But why? Why is he going to all of this effort? Well, combine it with what we saw Wait, in the so post-it the, uh, room. There's a family one. reunion scene. Multiple no, post-its referring to family. Stuff, the three why? siblings, their house. Remember what I said earlier? A robot has come into consciousness and is trying to reclaim what he lost. His family. He wants the family back together. And so he's doing everything in his power to make that happen. Using his hacking skills, he's managed to break into staff files. So he knows that there's something off about Vanessa. Maybe he even knows that his dad's conscious is inside of her. He's also got his brother in Freddy and his dad in the basement. The family in this game is truly coming together again, reclaiming what Crying Child once lost. And that's it. That's the whole theory done. There are definitely no holes or flaws to anything I just said. Don't look any deeper than everything I just told you. All right, fine. There might be a few itty bitty holes to all of this explanation, namely some of the info that we get from the last two CDs. If Patient 46 is Gregory, then why is he glitching the system to make all the animatronics scarier? If he lured Vanessa to the pizza plex, then why would he then be avoiding her throughout the game? Why would he be surprised to see Afton in the basement if he's trying to bring the family all together? There's also the mystery of the whole parent story. 46 is said to have good parents. None of what you said in your file about your parents was true. The truth is, you had great parents. A great childhood. Why did you lie? But how would records of good parenting exist for a robot who presumably had no parents? Or the crying child whose records presumably would say that he was dead? Or even if you don't believe those theories, if 46 is Gregory and Gregory's just a homeless kid, that doesn't sound like he would have had a great childhood or any sort of home life. But the kicker, the one to me that makes this really difficult to explain, is this email that I had long forgotten about from FNAF AR. Strap in for this one, friends. Hey Ness, I hope things are good. I saw you ordered three lifelike human male rubber masks, and I was dying to ask what they're for. Sounds to me like a robot kid is confirmed, but it also sounds to me like Vanessa built it, or gave rise to this robot kid. If so, then I ask again, why would Gregory be avoiding her throughout the game? I mean, the best I could come up with is that somehow Gregory escaped and is now convinced that Vanessa is trying to shut him down because of his rogue programming. I mean, it's not a bad idea, but then why would he be luring her to the pizza plex? It's like one half of each explanation works, but then when you try to connect it back with like the other half of the theory, they end up contradicting each other, which is really frustrating. There are two other options. First, the robot kid from the post-it room is entirely brand new. Or the second option is, it's someone that we never see in the game, Baby. Now, the first option of a brand new character, yeah, it's cool, I guess. I, I can't really speculate about that. It could literally go anywhere and solve everything. As for option two, Baby, just like with Gregory, there are certain things that fit and other things that just don't. Baby, like Gregory, could want to put the family back together. Baby has always wanted to make Daddy proud, so she'd be quite happy to kill off therapists that got too close to the truth, just like we see with 46. And she would willingly spread the Afton virus to make the animatronics scary in order to bring Daddy back. If she's using illusion discs, or if she acts like she does in the books, then it's possible that she'd be able to take the form of a child and make up a backstory. She's also a character that canonically loves disguises, just like Patient 46. It reminds you of a mask? It's like baby. a disguise? Yeah, I can see that. You like the idea of being disguised? Disguises like you be sort of invisible.
people, don't they? There's also a line about the therapist being able to see patient 46's eyes. That's better. On this side of the desk, I can see your eyes. And we know that baby's eye color has always been an important detail in the past. But as with Gregory, there are still a number of holes with this line of thinking. Baby slash Elizabeth likes flowers. Patient 46 doesn't. We also know baby hates being in the basement of sister location. So then why, as patient 46, would she prefer to live in a cave rather than blue sky? In short, as I wrap up my overall coverage of Security Breach, I guess I gotta summarize it like this. This game is frustrating from a lore standpoint. Smaller questions like Glamrock Bonnie and Golden Freddy, yeah, those are pretty easy to answer. But when it comes to what this game was actually about, no one theory actually solves it all in a clean way. There are references to every corner of the FNAF universe in here, but as a result, nothing fits cleanly together to solve everything. There are pieces that always dangle or always contradict something else. Do I think the crying child is here based on the post it room? Yes, absolutely. Is he Gregory? I mean, right now, I think that he's our best option. Is he also patient 46? Urgh, it seems like he's trying to be, but there are just a lot of holes there. And there are holes in the baby theory too. And that honestly just leaves the option of a mysterious third party pulling the strings behind the scenes, which on one hand would be welcome. I'd love to see a new character inserted into this lore. But on the other hand, it also feels unsatisfying because it's like, well, that came out of nowhere. This franchise franchise has never operated like that, so it feels weird for it to start acting that way now. Individually, small pieces of the mystery make sense, but when you take a step back and look at the wider lore of this series, how it connects to other games, how it connects to the wider story arc that's been created, that's when things start to fall apart. And yeah, I think that like, is what is so frustrating so with this title. So that's well, what I'm left totally with. Let me know what your thoughts mm -hmm. are. Are you that seeing things that I'm not? It. Hopefully it at least yep. sparked some ideas in your head. And hey, if it did, you can let me know live right now. I am a officially live with other members of Team Theorist, other FNAF tubers, all yeah, of us so covering much. things about this game. My hot takes on the security breach lore, other theories that we haven't covered yet, and of course, just generally chatting about what we thought of the game, where we think the franchise is going, and what we predict will be the upcoming DLC. Nothing is off the table, friends, so if you have FNAF theories yourself, throw them out there and we can discuss them live. Link is down in the description right now, stop on by, join us for some good old-fashioned live theory crafting. And while you're down there, just one last reminder to head on over to our merch store to get your hands on the first of its kind quest jacket. There's a very little well, The video's over. Uh, uh, man, so much. So much to take in. Like, when you watch the game, there's it's like, you can't talk because you don't want to forget anything or miss anything. So it's right. like you gotta be quiet and actually listen. Yeah, so that's why you can't really talk. You just gotta listen and be like, oh. Or, yeah, like, yeah. Because there's so much lore in the FNAF series. It's just like, it's pounding. Like, like it's really pounding from the amount of stuff that it has in the show. Yeah. Like, that series is probably one of the biggest series I've ever seen and last this long. Like, I know it's crazy. But yeah, if you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on post notice and everything like that. And like, and comment. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, wait. Uh-uh. 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 Mini Rock.